Hello guys and welcome back. Today I have a pretty interesting life gain list. Mono white life gain with this new expansion has gotten extremely powerful, mainly because of the inclusion of one card and that's Gideon's Company. This card can close out games so fast that it's, it's unbelievable. So without further ado, I'm just gonna get into the list and kind of let you know what's going on in the new additions. We run, you know, the normal package, two Healer's Hawks, couple Leon and Vanguards, three of Johnny's Welcomes, two Legion's Landings, four of Johnny's Pride Mates, two Tie Takers, Dawn of Hope for Draw, three Resplenda Angels, three Benelish Marshals, and three History of Benelias. Okay, so that's that's the base of the normal life gain deck. Then we move on to the additions, which, wow, are they freaking powerful, guys. So... You run two Gideon Blackblades. Okay, now Gideon Blackblade, as you'll see in some of these, one of these matches that I play, as Gideon's company gets bigger and bigger and bigger as you're giving it life turn every turn, you end up with like a 20-20 Gideon's company. Like it's really insane, right? And then if they have a blocker big enough to uh, chump to block it, you just end up giving it uh, indestructible until end of turn. So on top of that, because he's getting bigger and bigger and you're giving him life gain, respond to angel procs every turn. I mean, it's like you're you're almost um, in this deck. If she's on the field, you're probably procking her. She's probably procking every turn. So then we run two God Eternal Akatras or Aketras because it's just gives the deck some, some lasting power into the late game, which Mono White typically didn't have. And that's kind of the difference between the old mono white list and the new mono white list that I'm running. Um, the old mono white list would run out of steam and you kind of couldn't do anything later on in the game. You just kind of conceded if you didn't win by a certain point. This deck doesn't work that way. You get into the later turns and you can keep going. You know, like you can just keep going, keep generating angels, keep getting your guys bigger, keep uh, creating tokens with this guy. And then we also run one Gideon Oathsworn. Now, Gideon Oathsworn is in here as a buff creature. So, kind of like a Johnny. The only difference is, is he procs everything that attacks when you attack with two or more, and it's passive. And he also becomes a 5-5 indestructible until end of turn, when you need him to be. With the addition of being able to remove some stuff. So, overall, he's a better toolbox card, in my opinion, than a Johnny is. So that's why he's in here. You can use him for removal when you need to. You can turn him into a creature when you need to, and he boosts your creatures when you need to. So although he doesn't bring a creature back, I feel like he's more beneficial for the deck. So without any more time wasted blabbing my mouth off about it, I'm gonna let you see the games for yourself and you can see how powerful this deck has become. I hope you enjoy. All right, guys. For those of you who are new to this channel, we do our format a little different. I like to put the videos at 2x speed. I do this because I respect your time and I want to get to the games as quickly as possible and let you see what the decks are capable of without just fishing for, you know, view time from YouTube. I'd rather just respect your time and get the videos uh, over with as quickly as possible so you can move on to playing your games. So. We got a really strong start on this game. Our opponent looks to be doing some mass type of deck. I don't think that he's going to be fast enough to keep up with what we've got going on here. You're going to see Gideon's company and the strength of that. And we draw an immediate concede out of our opponent. So he would have been a 7-7 seven, seven on board. That just goes to show you how powerful that card is. You're going to see a lot of... Well, you're going to see a few instances of that card being played and how powerful it is on curve. So this hand was this hand was a little slow, but we're still going to keep it. We see a land more elves. We know we're probably coming up against some form of token deck. Or okay, well we see the Johnny's Pride made in. So it'll be interesting to see how the white and green version of this deck faces up against the mono white version. So pretty standard curve so far, not really 
ran into any of the new cards, although we do have one in our hand, wait to drop down and end the game. Don't know if taking that damage was the smartest thing our opponent could have done, but... So he's going to start growing his giant things. Basically, we need to be able to buff our things now. Luckily, we have a Gideon in hand that will do just that. So now you can see Gideon and what he does. Um, his passive ability, which allows us to give anything that's attacking plus one, plus one. Plus one, plus one counter. So, no reason not to attack with everything. He can't, he can't counter-attack our Gideon, because if he does, we will kill him the next turn, so... Parnit misplays and blocks the wrong creatures, which will be his demise. Well, I'm really having a lot of fun with this deck, guys, and I have been. Um, if you decide to make the list, I would say hop into casual to get used to it first. Maybe there's some, you know, tweaks or changes you want to make or something along those lines. But the, but the list I've been running, I mean, it's been really solid. It's very consistent. Oh, here we get to see the, uh, we get to see, we're going to get to see Gideon with the uh, four cost life gain card that gets tokens when you gain life. Gideon's Company or whatever it's called. So... We'll drop him down first. So now you're gonna see how this now you're gonna see how this deck plays on curve. So no play from our opponent is very bad for him, so we drop the Gideon's company. He's gonna get two counters on him. He's gonna get propped twice because we'll be able to give our token or our Little guy lifelink, and then we'll swing in. So 7-7 seven, seven on fourth turn. It's really cool that Mono White has this now because before if you wanted big creatures on like you know fourth turn, you were pretty much relying on green for that. But now that you can run a mono white list and have the benefit of a huge creature on turn four, it's just it's just amazing. So again, two procs on him, and fifth turn in 11-11, and that's game. That is how strong that card is, guys. It is so strong, and it's an uncommon. So again, we're on curve. So, token deck. So we're debating on whether we're playing Gideon or the history. We decide since tokens going wide is the uh, better choice. We don't mind attacking because we know that he is not wanting to block because we know that he is at some point going to try to boost all his tokens. So we can get the damage in while we can. If we drew a land right there, it would have been very, very good for us, but we didn't. We could have played Gideon's Company. But either way, we still have a pretty wide board, and it looks like our, opponent, our opponent's game plan is going wide, so... And there's your land, you're going to see Gideon's Company, the strength of it, again, he gets a proc from the Adrani's Welcome, he gets a proc from the Leonin Vanguard, 7-7, seven, seven, or 7-7, seven, seven, I guess 5th turn because we missed a land drop, but drops as a 7-7. Seven, seven. This guy almost always drops as a 7-7, seven, seven. It's, it's so crazy. Sure, as long as he doesn't have lethal, we'll block the most powerful one and take the rest. There's no reason not to, that's why we're doing that. There's no reason not to take the damage. In the air. The light, 
So Gideon would be good, but we need Banalish to kind of, I think, stall one more turn, because we could give lifelink to our Gideon's company. But what we'll do is play the Banalish Marshal, so that way we can generate a bigger board. And now our Gideon's company is a 12-12. So keep in mind, he was played last turn. He was a 7-7. It's now the following turn, and he is a 12-12. So our opponent has a lot of chump blockers out, but Gideon, Black Blade, look at this combo. Bam, you target Gideon's company, you give him lifelink, he gets huge, you attack, he's a 16-16 on the third turn he's been on the board, you gain 16 life, he gets two more counters, rinse and repeat my friends, and then wait till you see what happens when you get a Resplendent Angel out with him. This is the kind of staying power that this deck never used to have. So Mono White never used to have this kind of late game power. So we give him lifelink, we attack. And look at our life total. <laughs> so now we got 26, 26 on the board. We generated a 5-5 angel creature token. This guy's gonna be a lot in a lot of trouble if he cannot block flyers here pretty soon. Our opponent's much wider than this, but it doesn't matter because we're in the air. another token so really do I need to say more I mean you guys see how the deck's been being played you you see how good it is um, is it gonna win every single game you play probably not I'm, I'm sure there's some control decks that'll shut it down but man I'm telling you it has been a blast to play and I hope you guys enjoy playing it too I'm actually kind of amazed that we have not gotten the conceit out of our opponent at this point. What is our uh, Gideon's company up to? <laughs> yeah, sure, uh, you can attack that and we will just uh, not block it and then kill you next turn. Yeah, I think he realized he uh, oopsied. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed some of the new mechanics that I was able to show off today. Hope you're having fun with the War of the Spark expansion. Good luck in your matches. Till next time, enjoy life. I'll see you later.